Hi, I'm Libby Tate, director of Chapel Street Kids Mill Creek. Today, we're going to talk about hospitality. Fortunately, at least for me, we're not going to talk about cleaning our homes and making sure we know how to set a perfect scene for a fabulous dinner party. I have five kids and many pets, so honestly, the thought of that makes me break out in a sweat. Instead, I hope we'll discover that biblical hospitality is about setting a posture for our hearts, where we extend love and welcome to others out of the love and welcome that Jesus has extended to us. At Chapel Street, we often call it loving our neighbor. I have a very distinct and beautiful memory of one of the first times I encountered true hospitality. I was only three years old and lived in tiny town, Iowa. Our church had recently sponsored a family of 13, the Leuven family, who were refugees from Laos. The Leuvens had escaped the war and travesty in Laos and had gone through tremendous difficulties. In order to escape their war-torn country, the Leuvens had crossed the river in a small rowboat. Lon, the mother of the family, and the 11 kids rowed in the boat while Lon's husband swam across the river, pulling the boat and his family by a rope, desperately trying to reach the freedom of the shore on the other side. Bullets flew around them as soldiers tried to stop their escape. Miraculously, all 13 of them made it safely to the other side. This was just the beginning of their long journey from Southeast Asia to a tiny town in Iowa. I was three years old when my mom took me over to welcome our new Laotian neighbors. I distinctly remember walking into a home smelling of delicious lemongrass and freshly fried egg rolls. Several of the 11 children welcomed us in, as was the custom, which was evident by the 26 shoes sitting at the front door. We took our shoes off. The children called to their mother, and I will never forget my first encounter with Lon Lubin. Despite all she had been through, her beautiful face was beaming and she was smiling ear to ear. Her lovely dark hair was pulled back in a bun and her cooking apron was wrapped around her waist. She rushed towards my mom and me with arms wide open. This dear woman took my little face in her hands and began kissing my cheeks over and over and over while speaking sweet sounding words in Laotian. Of course, I couldn't understand a word that Lon said, but I remember the powerful rush of love and welcome that she greeted me with. This is a core memory of my early life that has always stayed with me. And I think the reason for that is that Lon flooded me with love. In our culture, we often think of hospitality as the environment we create in our homes, how well we produce a delicious meal, and all that we might do to make our guests feel as comfortable as possible. We'll all probably experience hosts that go out of their way to serve us as guests, and what a joy that hospitality brings. When we visit someone's house and they joyfully serve us in love and care, we are touched and experience a parcel of God's welcome and care for us. But through the scriptures, Jesus is calling us to an even deeper posture of hospitality. One of the most amazing ways that we see this, in this is in the story of Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha lived with their brother Lazarus in the town of Bethany. They were friends with Jesus, and the Bible tells us that Jesus came to Bethany. Martha welcomed him into her house. Now Martha, wanting to take care of her honored guest, quickly rushes around the house, tidying, getting food prepared, distracted by all of the work necessary to be a good host and give Jesus a proper welcome into her home. But as she looked over, her sister Mary was sitting at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. So, like most sisters would be, Martha was annoyed, and so annoyed that she actually went up to Jesus to complain. She said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. I can really imagine her doing this in a pretty whiny voice. And Jesus, who knows that the house must be readied, the food must be made, and all of the preparations must be finished, answered his dear friend in care and correction. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. 
Jesus didn't dismiss all of the work that needed to be done. He acknowledged it. But he also acknowledged how consumed Martha had become with all the preparations that she wanted to make. Martha was neglecting the most important part of a visit, being with the people around you. Jesus, who was a guest in their house, taught Martha that actually few things were needed to welcome him into their home. And actually only one thing was needed, to come and be with Jesus himself, to sit at his feet and be in his presence. Poor Martha. She had been so distracted with the work of hospitality that she missed the entire point of his visit, to be with him. Her sister Mary had postured herself at Jesus' feet and sat with him. Jesus invited Martha to come and do the same thing, and he invites all of us to come and do this too. What a beautiful example of hospitality Jesus teaches us. All of our preparation is important, but true hospitality is about being with the people in our homes, in our paths, and in our lives. It's about recognizing that Jesus pours out his welcome and invitation for us to be with him, and we can carry that wherever we go. He calls us to truly be with people we encounter. Hospitality may be experienced at a lovely dining room with a delicious meal, but it can also be experienced in the aisle of a grocery store when we stop and take a moment to be with the person we recognize from the baseball field. It can also be noticing the checkout clerk at Target, making eye contact and saying hello with a smile. It's a posture of our hearts to invite, welcome, and care for all of those around us. Fortunately, the call to action today isn't to make sure our houses are spit spot clean. And our call to action isn't to greet those around us like sweet Lon Leuven greeted with me so many years ago with drenching hugs and kisses, although I do love a good hug. But today, I'd like to suggest that each one of us just take three separate moments to go a little slower. Ask God who needs to be seen today and keep our eyes and our ears open to whom Jesus might send. And then take that moment to be with that person that God sends, even if it's a quick interaction at Home Depot or setting aside 15 minutes to listen to a story from a coworker. Let's posture our hearts as Mary did to be with those around us. The Bible tells us that love will never fail. And as we take a posture of hospitality with us wherever we go, may we welcome people in the name of Jesus, just like he has so generously welcomed us.